Today's message, the title of today's message is Lost. L U S T. Lost. God wants to talk to us about, about lost. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I begin with verse 1. For I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All of them experienced the baptism. All of them. And all ate the same spiritual food. All of them ate the same spiritual food. And all drank the same spiritual drink. For they were drinking from a spiritual rock which followed them. And the rock was Christ. All of them drank from Christ. Verse 5. Nevertheless, with most of them, God was not well pleased. For they were laid low in the wilderness. So even though all of them had the same spiritual nutrients, the same spiritual experience, yet God was not pleased with all of them. He wasn't pleased with all of them. All of them drank from the rock Christ, yet God was not pleased with all of them. Verse 6. Catch verse 6. Now these things happened as examples for us. That we should not crave evil things as they also craved. Let me go to the King James in 1 Corinthians. It says, These things happened that we should not crave evil things as they did. Verse 6. In the King James, it says, Now these things were our examples. To the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lost it. So the problem is, they drank from Christ, they ate spiritual food, but they were lusting after evil things. In spite of their, their, their sharing Christ, in spite of their experiencing Christ, they were still lusting about after evil things. Verse 7. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, fornication is an act of lust, as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, complain. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Catch this. Those that complained and those that committed fornication received the same punishment. So if you think by your complaining, God is pleased. God looks at that complaining just like it is fornication. They receive the same punishment. Verse 11. Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world Come. So here are the Israelites. They've left Egypt and they're on their way to Canaan. And between Egypt and Canaan is a point of transition. And in this point of transition, they begin to lust after evil things. They begin to lust after evil things. Now, lust simply means fleshly appetites, carnal desires apart from God. So they begin to lust after evil things in the desert. Let us get a reference point. Let us turn to Numbers chapter 11. Today is more like a teaching. I would encourage you to take notes. Take notes. This is where it's good to have a physical Bible. Numbers chapter 11. If you're there, please say amen. It's talking about the experience in the desert. Verse 4. I read from verse 4. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lost. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? You see, at this point, all they are eating is manna. They only have one type of food, manna. And the Bible says in verse 4 that the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. The mixed multitude began to lust. So it, bear in mind, let's catch this. It wasn't only the Israelites that made the exodus from Egypt. 
there was a mixed multitude with them. How do we know that? I give you an example. An Ethiopian woman was with them. Moses' wife was Ethiopian. So it wasn't only the Jews that came out of Egypt. There was also a mixed multitude with them. So the Bible tells us that this mixed multitude, they are now in the desert and they are beginning to lust after evil things. You see, that's a mixed multitude. The mixed multitude have one leg in and one leg out. The mixed multitude are still playing church. So they begin to lust after evil things. And as they begin to lust after evil things, and they begin to satisfy the object of their lust, as they begin to satisfy their lust, the children of Israel look at them and say, wow, we can lust too. And so the children of Israel that are supposed to teach the mixed multitude the ways of God succumb to what the mixed multitude we are doing. Verse 5. We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely. The cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside the manna before our eyes. So now, these are people that have come out of Egypt, but they are lusting after the things of Egypt. Their heart is still lusting after the things that Egypt provided for them. There are people that have come out of bondage today, and their heart is still lusting after those things that they left behind. Their heart is still lusting after those things that God delivered them from. God has delivered some people from alcohol, from nicotine, from all kinds of things. And then they still go and lost in like the mixed multitude. And the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 that they fell. He finished them off. He destroyed them. Because lost and God don't go together. Now, if you think you're all that special, I have news for you in Ephesians chapter 2. Let us turn in our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2. So this message is simply lost. What are we going to do with lost? If you're in Ephesians chapter 2, I begin reading from verse 1. And you have it quickened, who we are dead in trespasses and sins. The Bible says, you we are dead, I was dead in trespasses and sins. He didn't say we are dead to trespasses and sins. It's a difference between saying you are dead to sin and you're dead in sin. In other words, this sin has killed you completely. It has killed me completely. We are dead in trespasses and sin. Verse 2. We are in, in time past. In time past means before you were saved. It's taking you to the past. We are in, in time past. You walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience and among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the loss of our flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and we are by nature, and we are by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So the Bible is telling us that in times past, all we did was exercise and walk in the loss of our flesh. And God is very particular and very clear when it comes to lust. He lays down the law. Remember, lust is an extension of the flesh. The flesh is the outer man. Your spirit is the inner man. God resides in your inner man. Amen. Your inner man is saved. Your outer man it's not. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Your outer man is not going to heaven. That's why the Bible says when Christ will appear, you will see him and, as he is and you become like him. So the inner man is where God dwells. So the way God planned it is that the inner man will control the outer man. That's why you see Paul say, after I have disciplined my body, the outer man, the flesh and his carnal desires, I don't want to be disqualified for the prize. So the way God planned it is that the inner man will supervise the outer man. But when you're walking in the flesh, your outer man begins to supervise the inner man. So God and the outer man, all the outer man knows is lost. 
And lust, L-U-S-T, is not limited to sexual lusts. In the desert, we saw them lusting after evil things. Lust is any carnal desire that God does not approve of. That's why in the book of Exodus, the Ten Commandments, it says, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Covet means lust. Don't go lost after your neighbor's wife. Somebody hear what I'm saying? So God has laid down the law clearly concerning lust. I feel like I'm shouting. It's like this thing is not giving me right. So God has laid down the law concerning lust. Let us turn to, I think it's over there, brother. First John chapter 2. The book of 1 John, chapter 2. Are you there? Oh, awesome. I began reading for too long. I began reading from verse 15. If you're there, please say the amen. 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 He says, do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, let's see all that is in the world. The Bible says, if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Now the Bible is going to tell us all that is in the world. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, one, the lust of the flesh. Do you see that in your Bible? Two, the lust of the eyes. Today we are dealing with the lust of the flesh. We will get to the lust of the eyes later. And three, the boastful pride of life. It's not from the Father, but it's from the world. So, God is telling us in black and white that the lust of the flesh is not from Him. He wants us to crucify the flesh. The Bible tells us in fact, because this is a teaching, I won't say for lack of time, I will skip it. Let us go there. Let us go to Romans chapter 7. We are not preaching today. We are, we are teaching the word of God. We need to, to know the word of God. We must be that workman that rightly divides the word of truth. Amen, somebody? Amen. Amen. Mm. <coughs> Romans chapter 7. I read verse 18. I begin reading from verse 18. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For the wishing is present in me, but the doing of the good is not. See what he's saying. He says, I know that nothing good dwells in my flesh, in my outer man. My inner man wishes to do good, but my outer man just will not agree. So there's a conflict between my inner man and my outer man. Verse 19, for the, for the good that I wish, I do not do. That is the good my inner man wants to do. My outer man will not do it. But I practice the very evil that I do not wish. That means my outer man is in control. That outer man has to die. The outward man, the old man, the, I will listen, the new man has to be the one dominating the old man. The old man must die. Remember, the old man is a hindrance. He must die. He's not going to heaven. Christ did not come to save the old man. It's the new man. That's where Christ dwells. That's where the Holy Spirit is. So it's the new man. So catch this. What Paul is saying is that there is a conflict. I think I'm going to... Let us cut this off. I was just trying to have my hands free. So what Paul is saying is that there is a conflict. There is a conflict between the new man and the old man, between the inner man and the outer man. And because of that conflict, this is what happens. It is possible for you and for me to love God so much in our spirit and yet sin so much against him. It's possible to be in love with Jesus Christ like never before and yet you're still sinning. You're still engaging in lust. Why? Because two men are living inside you, or living inside you, and one has been crucified. And that is what Paul is discussing in his letter to the Romans. 
Are we following so far? Amen. Amen. Verse 21. I find then the principle that evil is present in me, the one who wishes to do good. I desire to do good. Paul is saying, I desire to do good, yet I find the principle that evil is present in me. Where is that evil in him? The flesh. The outer man. Verse 22. Let me read it. Verse 22. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. You see that? His inward man delights in the law of God. But the outer man has a problem with that. So it's possible for the inward man to be enjoying God and the outer man is doing nonsense. That's why we need deliverance. Don't say, no, I'm saved. I don't need deliverance. No, you're saved. You still need deliverance. It's your inner man that is saved. Verse 23. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members, in the outer man. Now, catch verse 25. Very important to where we are going tonight with lust. Verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, that is the inner mind, I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. You see why the flesh must be crucified? If the flesh is not crucified, you will serve the law of sin. Let's jump to Romans chapter 8. I read from verse 6. For the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the spirit is life and peace. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So the carnal mind is the outer man. And in Numbers chapter 11, you saw how the mixed multitude and the children of Israel went and lost. That is the outer man. It can never please God. It can never please God. God said, Adam and Eve, don't eat of that fruit. But they went lost in after the fruits. God is never pleased with that. The carnal mind is hostile to God. Let's go on. Romans 8, verse 13 contains some scary news, even for believers. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Let us jump to Galatians chapter 5. I know we are moving fast, but I need you to move fast with me. Is anybody, is there anybody disconnected from me? Or are we all together so far? Talk to me. Huh? Galatians, okay, let's go to Galatians chapter 5. Hallelujah. I read from verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. That is the only way you can deal with the outer man. Walk in the spirit. In other words, your life should be ruled by the inner man. Amen. It should be the inner man that subjects the outer man. The outer man shouldn't have a voice where your inner man is concerned. The outer man should be dead. Dead men don't speak. But the outer man is telling the inner man, you know what? Let's go to that bar. There's nothing wrong with the bar. I mean, you're not going to drink. You're just going to go there anyway just to talk. <laughs> and the inner man said, okay, let's go. <laughs> Walk in the spirit. You shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 
verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. He begins to list the works of the flesh. Lust is one of the major works. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Catch this. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they will do such things shall not, shall not, shall not, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. He is writing to Christians. Those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Go back to verse 19. We are teaching today. It says, now the works of the flesh. He didn't say now the works of the devil. Did you catch that? It's not saying the works of the devil. So before you go blame, blaming the devil and say Satan made you do it, the Bible says these are the works of the flesh. So what is happening is this. A spirit of lust gets entrance into our lives because of the flesh. When you crucify the flesh, you will stop that spirit of lust. It's because the flesh is not dead that the spirit of lust is, is playing with the flesh. That becomes his playground, Satan's playground. Satan's playground is your outer man. That's his playground. He says, if you engage in these things, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. We said something on the prayer line on Wednesday. We said the fact that you or I have the faith to move mountains does not mean we are going to heaven. Amen. You can move many mountains. That does not guarantee you are going to heaven. Because on the last day, they say, Lord, in your name we did this, and we cast out demons, and we did that, and we did this in your name. You say, well, go away from me. You walk out of iniquity. I know you not. Why? Because in their inner man, they had the faith to move mountains, but in their outer man, they were in iniquity. They were engaged in the works of the flesh. Are you a believer? Don't buy that lie. I don't care where you go to, to, to hear the word of God. Don't buy that lie that you can engage in sin and go to heaven. You will not go to heaven. You say, oh, once saved, always saved. I'm not getting into that theological debate. All I'm telling you is that if you buy the lie that you can go on sinning and you expect to enter heaven, you will be in for a surprise. Amen. For without holiness, no one will see God. Pastor, how can you say this? Right there in Galatians chapter 5, look at verse 24. Verse 24. And they that are Christ, those that belong to Jesus Christ, have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Those are the ones that belong to Jesus Christ. Those that have crucified the flesh with his affections and lusts. Those are the ones that belong to Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 8, it says something very interesting. It says there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. That is Romans 8 verse 1. Then, depending on the version you have, if you jump to verse 3, it defines those who are in Christ Jesus. Let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 1. We're still in Romans. Let's go back to Romans chapter 8. This is a teaching I will take time to rightly divide the word of truth. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. And then it defines those who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Those are the ones that are in Christ Jesus. The ones that walk after the flesh are not in Christ Jesus. You know why? Because if you walk in the flesh, it is impossible to please God. Those that walk in the flesh cannot please God. To be carnally minded is death. To be carnally minded is death. 
So the mixed multitude in Numbers chapter 11, they went and lost him. Catch this. You could lust for, in quotes, good things, but in the eyes of God, it is evil. If you lust for the thing that God has not ordained for you, even though in and of itself it seems to be a good thing, it becomes evil. Amen. Because you're going outside the parameters that God has set for your life. Now, let's begin to break down this lust as we close. This lust of the flesh, it has a cousin, the lust of the eyes. The Bible talks about the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. There are other lusts that are silent in the Bible, but if you have a discerning heart and you read through the Bible, you will know that there's also the lust of the ears. Those that have itchy ears, they want to hear itchy ears. He did what happened? He only oh, really did that. Oh wow! Who got him? Oh really? Oh wow! What website can I go and see it? You know what I'm saying? That's lost of the ears. You want to hear gossip? The Bible doesn't mention it expressly, but we read from the pages of the Bible. You know it is there. So this loss of the flesh has a cousin that fuels it: the loss of the eyes. Now the loss of the eyes. Is different from the loss of the flesh. The loss of the eyes is, I want to see. I want to see. Show me. Show me. I want to see. I want to see what God has said I should not see. I want to see it. The loss of the eyes always comes through visual appeal. The Bible says, when Satan showed Eve the fruit, she saw that it was desirable for it. She saw it. When Satan wanted to tempt Jesus after 40 days fasting, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 4, he showed him the kingdoms of the world. He showed him so that his eyes will be set on the kingdoms of the world, so that his eyes will start to lust after the kingdoms of the world. But Jesus did not even pay him any mind. Jesus dismissed him with the word of God. The loss of the eyes is what tells you that, you know what, I got to keep up with the Joneses. The Joneses have this, I got to have it. Because you see the Joneses have it in their garage, you want to have it. Oh, the Browns just have it, and the Joneses just have it, so I got to have it. So that's the loss of the eyes. And when the loss of the eyes is the gate way to the loss of the flesh. Job said in Job 31 verse 1, he said, I have made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a young maiden. Because if he doesn't make that covenant with his eyes, the eyes is the gateway. Before you know it, the flesh will be demanding that young maiden. So the loss of the eyes is that loss that says, you know what? I want to see what I'm not supposed to see. And the loss of the eyes is what has bound many Christians into pornography. And then Satan has made that a stronghold. Because they say, you know what? I'll just look at it one time. No, I just want to see what it's about. I'll look at it one time, and after that, no more. Guess what? They look at it one time, and it catches them because it's a spirit. Because the spirit is there. And before you know it, that lust of the eyes is a gate. Now it's in their flesh. Every day, they must look at porn. And before you know it, they are lost in after women on the streets. Or they are lost in after men on the streets. What is the loss of the eye? Jesus says, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Pluck it out. In other words, close your eyes. That pluck it out is another way of saying, you know what? Close your eyes. You don't need that eye. It is causing you to sin. When in summer, people dress provocatively. Not just women, men too. Dress provocatively. Close your eyes. Sometimes I find myself walking like this on the streets. <laughs> no, seriously, close your eyes. Because you have no business looking there. And God is saying that once there is lost, what he has written in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 is for our example, for our admonition. 
so that we don't fall like the children of Israel fell. Because of the fact that they went and lost them. If you continue in Numbers chapter 11, we don't have time. But if you continue in Numbers chapter 11, you will find something interesting. The mixed multitude went and lost them. The children of Israel joined them. They said, oh, come on, it's only this manner we're going to eat. We need meat, Moses. God, so Moses goes to God and says, God, why did you give me this assignment? God, it's better you kill me than let me be the leader of these people. And God tells Moses, he says, you know what? Moses, I will give them meat. It's meat they want. I will give them meat. Until the meat starts to come out of their ears, their nose, their mouth, I will give them meat to eat. Read it in Numbers chapter 11. And God raised down meat on them. And they start to eat wow. And as they are eating, they go. Why? Because of lust. Lust is never satisfied. Because of lust. Because they had this habit of lusting after evil things, only two people entered Cana. Out of God knows how many millions of them or thousands of them, only two were eligible to enter Cana. How do we handle these losses? Catch this. Don't let us pretend here. So long as you have a flesh, there's lost in you. Your loss is different from my loss, and my loss is different from your loss. So long as you have a flesh, there's lost in you. So long as I have a flesh, there's lost in me. That is why I must crucify my flesh. Daily. And that's what Paul was telling the Romans. He says, in my inner man, I desire to do good, to glorify God, to honor the law of God. But there's another principle in me, an evil principle that works in my flesh. The thing I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Lust will come in the form of a thought. And from a thought, it is carried out and executed and it becomes what? Sin and then death. So don't let us kill ourselves. So long as we have this flesh, Lost is there. And my loss can be different from your loss, and your loss can be different from my loss. And God is saying, what are you going to do with your loss? What are you going to do with your flesh? Because it is what you do with your flesh that will determine what happens to your loss. Remember, loss is a carnal desire. It's a fleshly appetite. It's an unholy appetite apart from God. Apart from the will of God. If God has said we should have blue, church, uh, blue chairs in this church, and I go to another church and I see purple chairs or red chairs, I'm like, wow, I think we should have red. You know, the purple will match with this purple, whatever that um, is on the wall. Wow, I think we need purple chairs. And this thing takes hold of my heart. And when it will take hold of my heart, all of a sudden, I won't know when I will take a pair of scissors and start to slice this one. And then I will go to church comes and say, you know what, all our chairs are dilapidated, we need new chairs. Why? Because lust is the one driving me. When you see a man, decent man, committing adultery or fornication or whatever, there is something driving him. He knows it is wrong. He's a Christian man. He reads his Bible. He prays every day. He knows it is wrong. But there is something telling him, go there. Proverbs chapter 6 talks about the adulterous woman. They know it is wrong, but they've not crucified the flesh. And the Bible says, walk in the spirit. And you will not gratify the loss, the desires of the flesh. The desires of the flesh are always lost because flesh is the old man. It says that you will not gratify the desires, the loss of the flesh. Is somebody following me? Amen. Let us conclude in the book of Romans, chapter 13. Romans, chapter 13. If you're there, please say amen. Amen. amen.
I read from verse 12. Romans 13, I read from verse 12. The night is fast spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Verse 14, Romans 13, verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh. If you make provision for the flesh, you will fulfill the lust thereof. Once you make accommodation to your flesh, you will fulfill its lust. Do not put yourself in a position where you will have to rely on your flesh. Because your flesh will fail you. Do not put yourself in a position where you depend on your flesh because your flesh cannot help you. It will fail you. You say you're single. Man and woman, single man, single woman. Don't spend time alone, long time alone in just the two of you in the same room. Oh, nothing will happen, Pastor. It's okay. Ah, we can control ourselves. Maybe nothing will happen, but why put yourself in that position where you're depending on your flesh to sustain you? Satan knows the only way he can win the battle with us is through our outer man. So he will do everything to resurrect the outer man. So he will start to speak to you. Because he knows the inner man, <laughs> Christ dwells there, the Holy Spirit is there. So he will do everything to raise up the outer man so that he can frustrate the inner man. So he will begin to resurrect the outer man. He will start to speak to you. So how could they treat you like that? Don't they know your worth? Don't they know who you are? And you're like, yeah, that's right. How could they treat me like that? And then pride enters. Pride enters. And before you know it, that pride begins to choke the inner man. And before you know it, Christ, the Holy Spirit, where the inner man dwells, is saying, don't take that pride. God resists the proud. But no, the pride has overrun the person. Since we want to live a powerful, effective Christian life that pleases Jesus Christ, I must learn to handle my flesh. And lust is just one walk of the flesh. There's anger, there's strife, there's malice. We saw that in Galatians 5, 19 to 21. You must take care of those things. Because if you don't crucify the flesh, those things mentioned in Galatians 5, 19 to 21, your flesh will drive you to do those things. If you're not careful. And then you say, how come? Sometimes you have to run. Joseph ran from Potiphar's wife. Because the longer he stayed there, the more vulnerable he becomes. Since, not just for the summer, but the Spirit of God has been ministering strongly to me, not just for the summer. Control your eyes. Control your eyes. Lost of the eyes. You want to watch that Oprah Winfrey show or whatever show at all costs. Or is it um, Jerry Springer? Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. You want to watch that show at all costs. Control your eyes. Because if you don't control your eyes, the stuff on that Jerry show will enter into your spirit. Your eyes is the gate. It will enter. You see when we are doing deliverance here, you look at eye to eye. It's not a joke. It's not a, a, a what do you call it? A magical art or, or mantra. When I say, oh, focus your eye on me. Because there's the lust of the eyes. It's in the eyes. If we succumb to the flesh, 
especially if we are Christian leaders, we succumb to the flesh. The devil will destroy our testimony. You see those Christian leaders that have succumbed to the flesh? We are no better than them. We are no better than them. The devil wants to do the same to us, to destroy our testimonies, to be carnally minded. Is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're still going to we're going to take some prayer points. Who's ready to pray tonight? Amen. 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 Can't pray sitting down. Can't pray sitting down. One of the works of the flesh in Galatians 5. God of Elijah. God of God of Elijah. God of Elijah. Send your fire. Send your fire. Into my life. Into my life. And purge me. Purge me. Of every work of the flesh. God of Elijah. Send your purifying fire. Into my life. And purge me. Of every work of the flesh. Oh God. Take the desires of my heart. Create in me a clean heart. Begin to ask God to send this fire into you. In the name of Jesus. Uh, begin to ask for the fire of the Holy Spirit uh, to put every walk of darkness in you. Uh, begin to ask for the fire of God. Uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, ask for the fire of God uh, to consume every dark thing in you. In the name of Jesus. My cold will go second. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every power of darkness, Every power of darkness. Manipu manipulating my life, manipulating my life. To walk in the works of the flesh. You that power of darkness. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind you in the name of Jesus. The word of God says that it is for freedom that Christ came to set us free. I walk in my liberty tonight. I crucify my flesh. I crucify my flesh. I crucify my flesh. That I may walk in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, oh Lord, your word declares, your word declares that, he that he who sets his mind on the flesh cannot please God. Cannot please God. Lord, forgive me, Lord, forgive me for, every for every time I have walked in the flesh. In the flesh. Oh, Lord, oh Lord, give me the grace, me the grace to walk in the Spirit. In the spirit. Give, me the grace give me the grace to be spiritually minded. Give me the grace never to be carnally minded in the name of Jesus oh God I want to live in the spirit I want to walk in the spirit and I will not gratify the desires of my flesh in Jesus name we pray when Satan has the advantage over us it's because our flesh is on the loose that's the only reason why. The greatest enemy is not Satan, it's our flesh, because the flesh provides the platform for him to operate. Many times we are doing deliverance here and the people haven't crucified their flesh. Waste of time. Waste of time. You come for deliverance, make sure your flesh is crucified first. Say, Lord. Lord. I dedicate my eyes to you. I my eyes. Sanctify, my eyes. Sanctify my eyes. Wash my eyes. Wash my eyes. With the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Oh, Lord. oh Lord. Sanctify my eyes. Sanctify my eyes. That, my eyes that my eyes will only see. What you want it to see. Me to see. Give me the 
grace to discipline my eyes that I will not engage in the loss of the eyes. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. As we are doing this, we are taking territory from the devil. Amen. Every unholy appetite within me. Every unholy appetite within me. Be destroyed by fire in the name of Jesus. Be destroyed by fire in the name of Jesus. Oh God, intervene in my life. Every unholy appetite. Every unholy desire. That is keeping me a slave and bound. Oh God, set me free. Lord, loose me from this thing. In the name of Jesus. That I will not lost like a mixed multitude. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, who the Son set free, is free indeed. Free from what? What is he setting you free from? Is it just demons? Or is he setting you free from yourself? What is he setting you free from? Many times, the old man changes the new man. The old man will put the new man in chains. And when the new man wants to fulfill the law of Christ, the old man will give an excuse. And the new man will succumb to the old man. Why? Because the old man still has a voice. Dead men don't have voices. The Bible says, who is in Christ? It's a new creation. All things have passed away. All things are made new. Old man has passed away. Passed away means die. Yeah. They say, oh, he passed away. He died. Old things have passed away. That old man must pass away. Amen. Old man. Old man. Old man. Old man. I'm a new creation in Christ I'm Jesus. This is how we get the victory in Christ Jesus. Your anointing will mean nothing if you're walking in the flesh. It will mean nothing. It will mean nothing. Because the Bible says the flesh lost after the spirit. Spirit lost after the flesh. They are war. So if you're walking in the flesh, that flesh will fight your anointing. After all, Saul was anointed. Many kings in the book of Kings and Chronicles were anointed. But they decided to engage in the flesh. Say, Lord, Lord. give me the humility, me the humility. As, I as I humble myself to walk in your holiness. Enable me, Enable me to practice holiness. To practice holiness. That, my that my lifestyle will reflect your holiness. Reflect your holiness. Oh, Lord, oh Lord, help me, help me to, live to live for you in spirit, in spirit and in truth. And in truth. I thank you. I thank in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.